gentlemen, we have a special guest at the tavern today. Today we have independent wrestling superstar Jake Manning. Jake, how's it going? Good. It's, it's glad to be here at the tavern. Uh, a man who doesn't drink is sitting down at the tavern. Uh, we will we'll discuss whatever you guys want to discuss. Just don't force alcohol down my throat. You know what? That. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of pull the curtain back on us a little bit here at the tavern. With rarely do we ever have a drink. <laughs> well. Yeah. It, you rarely have a drink, but you're big on alliteration, so I get it. I understand. So, <laughs> well, thanks for doing this, man. We're uh, we're super excited to have you on here. And when I brought you on, I wanted to introduce you as the Man Scout, Jake Manning. Yes. Um. So take us back to you know where everything started for you. You know when you were a young, um, when you were young, were you always a wrestling fan? And how did your fandom start? Oh gosh, I go right to the, the the standard question. So I'll give you the wonderful standard, beautiful answer, and it's <laughs> almost like I've rehearsed it a million times. And I swear to God, it's true because it sounds like I've perfected the story over time. But this is uh, the story, and it, like I said, it sounds like too pristine. But this is what happens. One of my earliest memories in life is of a wrestling match. That I, that I saw and for a long 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 time I thought it was Junkyard Dog versus Ted DiBiase it was for sure Junkyard Dog you can't uh, misplace and confuse him <laughs> right, absolutely, yeah. but he was wrestling a guy in black trunks who I always assumed was Ted DiBiase but after remembering the particulars of this memory um, I had to do a little bit of research because basically it all, it all kind of started that I was aware of wrestling I seemed to be interested in my re in wrestling, and thus my parents, uh, at a very young age, was like, "Let's do something to maybe nurture this," or like he clearly likes this. Let's give him more of this so he can stop complaining um, and stop destroying things in the house. <laughs> so let's 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 find a way for him to watch some wrestling because I lived in the middle of nowhere, Iowa. Uh, broadcasting channels, I think we had three of them. Oh, and wow. so, so it was like syndication. It was very spotty. So, but what my parents did is they bought a VCR. And of course my dad was just all about like technology and like, Oh, you know, you can record programs with this on a tape. And <laughs> so, he, magic. <laughs> so, so here it is an opportunity for my dad to shut his annoying kid up and also use this new piece of technology that he spent money on. Um, and thus the idea for him to record Saturday night's main event. So, because it had to be Saturday night's main event, because I remember them saying, we're going to record some wrestling and you're going to watch it after church. So clearly it has to be something on Saturday night. Right. And right. then clearly it has, I remember it as plain as day as Junkyard Dog. And then about the time that some of my other like earliest memories were formed, well, I think it was about... 87 ish or so so i had to do a little bit of research as like when did junkyard dog wrestle on saturday night's main event in 1987 who did he wrestle somebody went black trunks lo and behold the actual first ever match that i ever saw was terry funk versus the junkyard dog oh and wow if, oh if you've ever seen that match from saturday night's main event it is terry funk doing the dumbest <laughs> most ridiculous sells for junkyard dog and if you know <laughs> anything about my wrestling and i tell you that this is my this matches my earliest memory like oh yeah all this tracks this all, all the pieces <laughs> fits. we were we were doing this puzzle and there was like little solid black pieces and i don't know where this goes but then you're like oh hearing that that makes everything fit. yeah <laughs> it's, it's crazy how those little things like that you don't really look at them as important but then it's almost like they dig into your psyche and do somehow shape you later on in life. And, and so that's the thing too, is like, and now saying the story again, I feel, I feel, I don't know how he would have took it because, because I just kind of wanted to keep, keep myself quiet and hang back when I met Terry Funk earlier this year and got to hang out with him with my, with my time at high spots and was in Amarillo, Texas with Terry Funk. And I, I just kind of kept my mouth shut and kind of, you know, just absorbed him. And, yeah. Right. And, I, and I think I might've said it on the virtual gimmick table. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure, 
But, you know, sometimes those virtual giving table conversations, they just go where the talent wants it to go. It's right, right, right. Because they let them go. And I may have made some made some sort of mention that he was my earliest memory. I can't remember. Uh, but, I mean, I, I remember talking to him for an hour. And so, like, I, I think I did. I, now that I recall it, I think I do recall saying that, like, he was one of my earliest memories in, in life. Um, so, you know, yeah, like, just the, the fact that I it comes full circle now around like in 2021, like getting to meet this guy who's my earliest memory and like we're on screen together talking about his wrestling career and how he's affected me and where I at, where I see myself going in the future right. and use right. him as a role model. And it's, it's, it's this weird thing that it's like, it's just it's fascinating how the pieces all come together so absolutely just, of all the people it's not like i it's not like i watch you know jimmy jack funk versus junkyard dog and then it's like oh, I, never, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never met any of these guys i was a good match <laughs> i mean it's it's funny like layla hirsch like she said that she had a similar moment like that but obviously she's far younger than i am and right. and that match for her was uh our truth versus mike knox oh wow which wow. like i like both of those guys yeah <laughs> like right. but right. like if you're gonna be like yeah that's what i want to do like i don't know if that's the set like i don't think a lot <laughs> right. of people are gonna come up with that answer like what's the match of one to make you a wrestler i don't think a lot of people would have came up with that right yeah and if they do i don't think that is I don't think they'd ever say it. Yeah, Terry yeah, Funk yeah. and JYD. I mean, that that makes oh, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now it seems like I'm a poser for saying that. You know. <laughs> like, but but no, like like it's it's weird with that that matches for people that it, it just it clicks for them and and for now, me with with Junkyard Dog was the fact that when he came out to the ring, people stood up. Oh yeah. 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 That's that like here's this person walking into the building and people got excited and stood up and wanted to take a look at him and like that's that that's the thing that i thought yeah. was so cool definitely that respect and showmanship yeah now you you had uh mentioned your time at high spots and i imagine you know the amount of just awesome people you got to meet and kind of shoot the shit with and and talk about wrestling and all all of the stuff you got to do at high spots and i know recently you just left uh how was that leaving a place like that? And what were some of the more like impactful moments of your time working at high spots? I mean, like, uh, well, first of all, I, I haven't had a forum to, to really say this. So thank you guys for allowing me to say this is, you know, thank you to everybody that reached out and I let everybody know that this is happening. And like, I don't like putting my business out there too much. Right. I know we have we're social media and kind of got to put your business out there a lot to let people know you exist, especially as an entertainer. And it seems like that's the the personal stuff seems to be what people are gravitated towards, um, as opposed to here's a show poster that I'm doing this Friday, or here's right. another thing. You know, right, and people right. want to know a little bit more about these people. So I haven't had a like a really forum verbally, video, video, audio wise, to let people know thank you. Uh, there were a lot of people that like really reached out in, in a big way too yeah when, when i when i put it out there i mostly put it out there just so like i wouldn't have somebody a week after i quit going hey man um what what type of knee pads do you have like, <laughs> yeah. um do you do you think you could like bring a canvas to the show in west virginia or like, <laughs> hey like i'm thinking about like so you know doing a pivot share with you guys what's the split on that like i mean i just did it so people wouldn't give me annoying questions or, uh, right right and, yeah. you know just, something, just understandable to, and also too like so they don't like log on the virtual gimmick table and be like what happened did jake die and then nobody <laughs> books me anymore because they think i'm dead but it's like most <laughs> yeah. people are most people are confused like i post a picture of me you know doing HVAC work just to kind of make some extra money right now and people are like oh you quit wrestling enjoy civilian life we'll never book you again Bye. Right. Hey. Right. and I'm like no yeah. I'm not dying <laughs> this is just that. a piece of it yeah. <laughs> this is just because wrestling promoters don't pay for trans like, <laughs> right. Right. yeah like I'm not famous enough to get trans. All right. Like, <laughs> yeah. I gotta I've gotta put money in the gas tank before I leave there. Like you know what I So I gotta I gotta I gotta do that. So like so so thank thank you for doing the opportunity to tell everybody thank you. I met a lot of people. 
like said a lot of really very kind things and I, I think something that's floated around um especially with employees and former employees or people that did a lot of business with high spots the, the words end of an era was was used in in, in me leaving and like I, I think that's like very humbling to to see that i was so identified with that company and that yeah that that me leaving isn't just an employee saying goodbye or i quit it's it's the sh it's a shift you know like when right. when, steve, when steve job leaves apple right what is apple now you well, know it, it's it's not some programmer that they had working on an internship it's like well it's my last day guys bye <laughs> uh, so it, it's it like that was that's what it felt like you know like you know all those examples of like like i said like steve jobs being being told yeah i mean you were an Apple. institution there man yeah man every yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people just knew your face from all the virtual signings and you know you talked about getting the chat with terry funk is, is there one thing that really like you look back on and you're like man i can't believe i got to do that or i can't believe i had to have that conversation like a pat particular conversation maybe that really maybe struck you in your your wrestling career well i mean terry funk is obviously right at the forefront because we're, we're talking about him right now right um there's i mean sometimes it's this dumb silly stuff mm -hmm. like getting to talk with lex luger about the allied powers Right. As as a kid that grew up loving the new generation of the WWF, yeah, like, yeah. Yep. just getting to to ask those like weird nerdy 1995 questions that yeah. I had when I was 13. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, like that's a thing. But then also too like forming friendships with people who I'd been in locker rooms with and seen at a show and just been like, hey man, what's going on? And then I go off and put together my match and set up a tent and then go out there and do whatever i do and right. come back and go to the merch table and tear down the cameras and leave and then i never see that person ever again until the next time i go hey what's going on man and then like you know with like the vgt's getting to talk with and hang with sammy guevara like right for like an hour and us just being stupid, stupid and giddy and goofy <laughs> yeah. and dumb and weird and just like forming like 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 uh, I'd say a friendship. Like I I went to a oh, yeah. South Carolina uh, Comic Con that he was at, and of course like I had to pull my mask down because nobody like when I'm like this with masks nobody knows who I am. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> That's the man scout, you know. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. so like I, I had to go up to him and pull my mask down, and he like he like like. He like walked past everybody who was in line for autographs, gave me a big hug. I just wanted to say hi. I didn't want to interrupt anybody, but he stopped everything and just like, like and this is a guy that without doing the VGTs would just be another guy. But hey man, what's going on? Oh, I've heard right. Oh, cool. Right. Man. Nice Twitter. Oh, nice vlog. You know, and and that's being it. But like I can like getting to have friendships with people, and then I think like a very underrated virtual gimmick table we did was the Britt Baker one like if that's a, if that's anywhere on YouTube I recommend that you guys go watch that <laughs> that ba that bouncing back and forth with like I, I really should just rip that and send that to AEW and be like this is what I can do <laughs> interview wise yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you, want, you want a jacked mean Gene Okerlund that's going to shine up your talent here it is right, like, right, right. <laughs> and she's she's fantastic fantastic as a character yeah and was that the entire time she was on and like just like i said just a girl who like had been on some queens of combat shows been on yeah. aw and really would have been just like high by situation but now when i did my like aw dark appearances she stopped what she was doing like oh my gosh i can't believe you're here it's so great to see you like that's awesome that's, that's not something that would have happened if it wasn't for things like that so to right me, it's like getting to see a lot of these guys who were like i was never gonna have contact with for whatever reason because i'm just busy when i go to the show like, right right like i don't know if you guys are going to the show the pro wrestling conquest this weekend oh absolutely but, we'll be there well I, at least now that i'm not working at high spots i'm not like running the cameras running the high spots merch table right then doing this then trying to do business with somebody get 
get 500 autographs signed by somebody in the locker room because we did a subscription box deal with them. Oh, uh, yeah. and then, then, then go over my match with like 18 other people in it. I got to get everybody on the same page and then, and then <laughs> yeah. and run around. So like, like, but I still probably find ways to be busy at, at the show. So sometimes when I get there, I'm just big, 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 and I never have time to just sit down and hang with somebody and talk with somebody. Right. So, there's so much business I have to do and getting to be friends with some people that I wouldn't be friends with because we had to be friends for an hour. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, at least an hour we had to be friends. And right. it's not, I mean, obviously the people who I looked up to and watched on TV, those are cool. And, the, and a lot of those legends were like finding out how cool they were to talk to. It's great. But I think a lot of the younger guys get an opportunity to talk with them, hang out with them and just like, just become friends yeah, right yeah. before your right before, right before your eyes and, right. and, and that and and also too like you have those moments with people who i really do like like it was so nice to have priscilla kelly there like yeah and like and she's i knew her when she knew nothing about wrestling like i yeah. remember they they just brought her down in the ring because she was on like that gypsy wife or something like that <laughs> yeah. and they had her do something and i remember taking her aside i'm like no when you when you manage you gotta do this and, this. and just like i was like critiquing her on her managing and just taking time and then anytime she had a match took the time to go over stuff with her and like just haven't had time to really talk to her and i think the virtual gimmick table gave me that opportunity to talk to people i haven't talked to in a while that's all. Now, one thing I wanted to, I find interesting, you've been doing open mics. You're going to be doing a stand-up comedy open mic tonight. Yeah. Um, now, with the stand, was that a love you had before you started wrestling on the indies? And now that you're kind of doing some of these open mics, it, do you take anything from that to bring into honing and building out the man scout persona you've kind of created for yourself? Just don't do open mics here, guys. Uh, the world's open up again. I'm going to be doing shows again. I produce shows. I used to produce three shows in the greater Charlotte area. That's awesome. Uh, very soon, those those rooms will be opening up, so I'll be producing those shows again. Also, the Comedy Zone here locally, which is an A room. They put me up from weekends from time to time. Like, you know, I, like I emceed for John Reap, Julia McCullough, um, Overton Jones from Living Single. With, with yeah, the whole night. Love and, then, and, and then anytime they have a wrestler who's doing comedy, like I'm, I'm always the feature act. Right. I'm always, I'm always their opener. Like I've opened for Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Jake the Snake Roberts, oh, uh, wow. Mick, Fo Mick Foley for an entire week, and me and Mick Foley, like our green room conversations. And this is, this is, this is something I'm always big on, is me and Mick Foley's green room conversations is a conversation with two guys that I, I think are like very knowledge, like knowledgeable in a sense of like, obviously his knowledge is much greater because he's, he's intelligent, extremely intelligent. And he's done it at the highest level, hall of fame level. Um, but I, I feel like I'm very observant and pay attention to things and know a lot of facets of professional wrestling. But then at the same time too, we're both navigating this world of comedy, but then yet we know there's these wrestling fans in the audience. And then how do we make these points meet? So we're having conversations about performance um, jokes. We're having conversations that there may be five people in the whole world that, that would understand what we're talking about. Right. right. And that just, just, I mean, anytime you can be in an elite class of people, uh, and, and have these unique conversations that nobody else is having. I think that really kind of puts you at, puts puts both of us, I think, very much in a different place than everybody else. And, and I think that like understanding the performance aspect, like how can we take what's going on over here at pro wrestling, make it work here, but then how do we make the stand up thing fit in this pro wrestling peg? Because we kind of exist in this weird world. And like, unlike a lot of other people, like a lot of people, they just tell stories and. You know, sometimes I say a curse word and that's the laugh. Right. Yeah. That's a punchline. <laughs> yeah. But Mick works on his jokes. He's thinking about the turn. He's trying new things. You know, we're talking like, and he's like, what do you think if I do this? 
what do you think about the structure? And he's thinking about the structure of a set. And he's thinking about where we're going to go. What bits are we going to do? He's like, ah, I'll bring you on stage for this bit. I think this is going to work, you know, and then do this. And, then, uh, you know, and he really puts a lot of work into his, his comedy show. Right. And, and, and I'd even say, and I don't mean just comedy show, but he puts a lot of work in his stand-up. Yeah. He, he did the work. Like he would do, do you, he would hit three spots every night in New York to get better at it and work at it and dedicated to it. Obviously, he has a lot of things that he has to do, um, and I'm, but I'm sure if he had more time, he would focus more on, on the stand-up. Me, on the other hand, I'm not quite as multifaceted as Nick <laughs> Foley. Uh, I have a bit more time to, to, to work on it and work on the jokes. And for a long time, I kept the two separate for so long, but now I've tried to figure out how to make it mesh. But, you know, to circle back to the VGTs, I think coming out of this, you know, quarantine and lockdown, it's been the VGTs that have really made me a better performer. Right. Because I've, I, and I, and I took, saw the VGTs as shows. So I presented a show. I, 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 anybody that knows me um, knows that I put a lot of work into those Thursday shows and rundowns and formats. And I treated it no different than the way that Johnny Carson treated the Tonight Show. I remember listening to a, the Carson podcast by, um, uh, Mark Mark Malkoff, you you can see him. He's he's one of the talking heads on the the history of late night on CNN. But Mark Malkoff does this fantastic podcast, the Carson podcast. I recommend anybody that loves comedy, entertainment, old school entertainment. Just talks about the tenets of you know running a successful show. And I tried to do treat the VGTs in the same exact way. And because of that, and thinking of my feet. And, and taking things where they go and taking humor when it goes, but then also getting the confidence to know that I can make me selling this eight by 10 or me getting selling the side action figure. I can make this funny. Yeah. Right. It gives, it gives me the belief that this joke that I prepared, tested, tried out a million times, different <laughs> crowds that I know I can at least make this funny. If I can make the signed action figure funny, I can make this joke funny and I can make it better and work on it and Perform it in the way it needs to perform, and I can take this set that's happening in a bar where people are not paying attention and try and get their attention because I had to do that through a computer screen. I had to do that through a camera in a dead set where everybody's busy working. <laughs> right? Yeah, and I'm trying to get them to laugh. That was always the, the goal every single week is to get the crew to laugh because then I know. I'm funny because I get people to break from what they were doing. That was always the big thing. Oh, if you can get the crew to laugh, that's yeah. And especially my boss, if I could get Michael Bikikio to laugh or <laughs> the best is when I could get him to look confused <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because then I know he doesn't understand the joke, but then I know everybody else will. Like there's that sense of he's like I think that was a joke, but then he's also thinking too in the business acumen is like was that offensive? Like am I going to get <laughs> shut down for this? I'm like no, that's a funny joke and it works well. Trust me. Like those are <laughs> yeah. those are those are, those are, those are, those are the what those are the moments that I like the most is get, getting everybody go like everybody laughs and he goes what did he say? <laughs> because he's looking at it as, as as a as a business owner in that moment in time and hoping that it, this whole thing won't come crumbling down on the words. <laughs> the man's go check that. Yeah. So how how did you come up with the man scout gimmick? Like, what was that kernel of an idea that you're like, this is what I'm going to bring to the indie wrestling scene? Well, I mean, it's. Uh... Were you a Boy Scout? Yeah, I'm an Eagle Scout. Okay. Uh, Eagle Scout, and I was just telling somebody this today. It's, this is a very odd thing about me. I am the same size I was in high school, and I <laughs> and I have to I have to eat a lot of money and work very. very I eat a lot of money. I have to eat a lot of food. It takes a lot of money <laughs> takes to a lot eat. Of money. A, it takes a lot of money to eat a lot of food to just stay at the weight I was at in high school. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't know what's wrong with my metabolism. <laughs> Excuse me. But I like that's uh, the weird thing with me is that um, I, I still wear my old Boy Scout uniform. I still fit into it. I, I like I said, grew up in the WWF 
new generation yeah, occ- yeah. occupational gimmicks. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought Vince McMahon would see me doing this Boy Scout character and be like, that's some good shit right there. Like, Bring him on. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I thought I, I'd have action figures of me, and merchandise, a multitude of level. Because I just there's a multitude of different things, and of course that wasn't the case. And then I've got to take this character and figure out what are the facets to it, and I've tried to do uh, different layers to it. Um, I've never had a wrestling promotion that's really given me the opportunity to dig into it too deeply, other than Wrestling Revolver, uh, especially with my few year long feud with the Tent. <laughs> um, just yeah, now when you, when you break that tin out people i mean it's over people yeah. hop which is great when uh, for you to say because now you're not saying you know when you do that 450 phoenix splash people just go crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that, that's gotta hurt your knees after a while breaking a tent out now it's just mere logistic is the entrance way big enough for a tent <laughs> which indie shows is my biggest fear like i i'm so i'm i hope uh, this friday uh, 7 30 p.m. bell time pro wrestling conquest conquest stampede i hope i hope to god pro wrestling conquest has a big enough entrance way for a tent that's yeah, all I, that, I, I that. Be good as long as my truck doesn't blow up and the entrance way is big enough <laughs> it's it's gonna be a, a classic man scout manning match we can't wait to see you uh this friday that's may 21st 7 30 bell time at the quantum sports facility in canal city it's charleston west virginia um conquest stampede we got one last question for you we like to ask all of our guests this question it's our it's our three guys in a van question okay the indie scene has opened back up you're making towns you can have any three wrestlers alive or dead in the car with you making those towns what three wrestlers alive or dead would you have in the car with you okay three not including me right right correct okay so i'll make sure of this well this is gonna be an easy one and you guys are gonna like i i would pick i have there during this this, this pandemic and this quarantine i was lucky enough to have the key to hebron hall which is uh, where the training school for pro, for high spots is in PWX. <laughs> and to stay in ring shape, like I'd say last year at this time, I was in the best ring shape I'd ever been because I basically scooped up Lucky Ali, grabbed him by the back of the neck and said, we're training for an hour every week. <laughs> yeah. And it was just tackle, drop downs, get it again for an hour. Just, and we would go until we soak the mat. Right. Like, in, in, like, until it became too dangerous for us to do rope spots. <laughs> <laughs> and and I would love to scoop him up, especially now that he has a driver's license. Um, <laughs> he can that was always, that, that, now we can, now we can help with the trips, but also too, I think you need that one guy to be like, give a hard time with. Oh yeah. And, like, and he, he yep. would be that guy and he would give it just enough that he wouldn't be disrespectful. Yeah. And kind of be like, hey, you can't run over me like that, but I'll be a part of the fun. Like, right. if, you, like if you're like, I'm on like obviously this work cruise, and sometimes you got to have that. Like, I can get a joke in, but I'm not jokey all the time. And he he understands that dynamic, and he's very very smart. And I, you got to have that one guy that's oh, yeah. to take the wheel late at night, and also to you got to that one guy be like go do this or he's up for anything very young and bright eyed bushy tail. I think, he, yeah. I think he, he would be he would definitely be a guy. Um gosh. This is this is, this is gonna be a weird card ride and it's and it's it, this would change every single time. I would also probably throw since we just talking about Sammy Guevara mostly because we he would film his vlog and of course I would get tons of likes after that. <laughs> oh, yeah, like yeah. look what he did with Fuego Adel Soul, man. Like yeah, let yeah, me man. let me be your Boy Scout version of Fuego, man. Like <laughs> Fuego Scout, you know, give me the rub, Sammy. Right. So I'd, br- I'd bring that just because he's definitely gonna film like a vlog and get us all famous. So now that brings for the for the one other guy. Gosh, I feel like we need a grizzled vet. Yeah. We need we need and you know we could just we could say we could say Terry Funk, but I think that's the obvious one. But I can't really think of anybody else that is just 
just weird enough to make it work. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I, you know, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say Terry Funk. Yeah, we, we mentioned him. Or, we're gonna bring it full circle. It's gonna be Lucky Ali, Sammy Guevara, and Terry Funk, and we're all gonna be on Sammy's blog. And Love just every, every single week, Terry Funk's going to do something weird on Sammy's blog. And, <laughs> and Lucky's going to take the brunt of every joke. And, I, and me and Sammy will be in the mix there, just having a good time. And I'd be all about that. It'll be all over the place as a card. We'll show <laughs> yeah, up yeah. and it's like Terry will be doing his appearance at the beginning of the show and then just drink beer in the locker room the rest of the night. <laughs> Sammy's going to go on in the main event and do all the spots in the world. Lucky and I are going to be in the opener, and hopefully it doesn't drop me on my head. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. So, that uh, sounds like a. And if you get tired of him, you'll have your tent. And you can just get away from him. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I'll, just, I'll pull him in the tent. We'll have the fight in the tent. Mm, yes. <laughs> well, man, it's been great having you. Um, we'll see you on uh, this Friday, the twenty first. Uh, we'll be there cheering you on. We can't wait to see the tent and uh yeah what what let our listeners know where they can find you on social media oh please anywhere at man scout manning just type in man scout manning on instagram twitter and even youtube i've been posting a few more things on youtube because i now have the time to curate my youtube page so and and if we're in your neck of the woods where where can we see you do comedy uh right now there's a it's things are just opening right now just pay attention to my twitter and instagram page there's a lot of like bar shows uh where i basically set up a a microphone in the middle of a bar and everybody's eating chicken wings and having beers and trying to watch the <laughs> hockey game and they're like go do comedy <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot of that there's a lot of that right now but there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of good places uh that open up i guess the trail house is gonna be gonna be a cool one here in, in june the 12th or 13th it's all on instagram and twitter i i make a point to use my platform to get people to go to my show so just use those check out the social medias especially my facebook man's got man Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing the show, Jake. We'll see you this Friday, uh, the 21st at Conquest Stampede. We look forward to seeing more of you, man. All right. Thank you so much for having me.